Hit the record button here. Thank you. Robin, thanks for joining me today. Very excited about what you're doing in the community and what you're doing for events. And I wanted to share with our listeners Mm -hmm. about your expertise and how you bring so much value to people like me or authors, speakers, and coaches that are are doing these events. Because I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't have the bandwidth to do it. If I'm focusing on presenting, if I'm focusing on books or or providing value to my client, uh, I just don't have the capability to do what you do. And Mm -hmm. I've watched you perform. Uh, We first met at a mastermind event, and I was thoroughly impressed with how how you worked the room, how you greeted me, how you greeted the guests. And I'm like, wow. I mean, you had the wow factor from the get-go. And <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what, we, what we found out before was it was amazing that, you know, I did some LinkedIn campaigns about looking for people to interview, and you had responded because we were in some groups together, mm-hmm. and you had responded that you were interested in being interviewed, and I hadn't gotten back to you, and here you are okay. in Houston, and we meet at an event, and I tell you, I say, well, make sure you connect with me. And I look, and I'm like, my gosh, we're already connected. You wanted me to interview. <laughs> Small and, world. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, you know, help, help the listeners understand what it is that events of significance can do to relieve that, that burden of uh, entrepreneurs, speakers that are holding major events. As you know, I have a major event coming up, the Bold Book Tour, Yay, congratulations. Kick, thank you. And uh, it's me and a, and a team. <clears throat> Excuse mm-hmm. me, it's me and, and others, three, uh, three to four others with Les Brown. And it's kicking off here in Houston on August 6th. And uh, it's going to be a challenge. So if you can uh, just tell us how you work and how you operate on uh, how to make these things successful. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, I will tell you that you're not alone in your thinking. You know, I think God gives us gifts us with different strengths, and He also gifts us with people in front of us that have strengths in areas that we don't have and that we're weak in. So I do find a lot of our clients, most of our clients, they just don't have the organization skills. They don't have the experience. They don't have the knowledge to do what they, what we do, and they don't want to do it. Most of the times they say to us, um, can you just do this all for me? Can you be the done-for-you event planner? Yes, we can. So we consider ourselves details to done. Um, the first thing I would ask you, Tracy, you know, if you were calling me as a, as a potential client here for your book launch or whatever kind of event you want to do, is I would suggest that we start with the dream. And what I mean by that is, tell me what your Maserati looks like. Let's start with the end in mind and work backwards. That's the way event planners do. We start with what your dream is, what you want it to look like, what your expectations are, what you want your guests to walk away from, away from that event. Not only your guests, but even the participants such as yourself. Because what happens is, especially when we do the speaking engagements and the hosts of the event, they want to be out there hobnobbing with their people. They want to be rubbing elbows with their guests. They want to be spending time with their guests. They want to be thanking them for coming and being the celebrity in the room. And when you're the event planner, you give this peace of mind that you don't have to worry about the mic, the battery on the microphone going bad. You don't have to worry that the lighting is too bright where the cameras are not catching and recording everything that you're doing. You don't have to worry that a microphone pops in and off or you get vibration and reverb on the back end because we have all of that covered for you. So when we do all the details like that for you, you can be your real you. And that's that's one of the positive return on investments is that you can be you and we can be us and we can make you the rock star because you don't have to worry about what time the food's coming or what the timeline is looking like or 
you know, who's going to do the prop sets in between the speakers and that type of thing. So um, we always start with what does your dream look like? What's your vision? What does that look like to you? And we ask those few questions, and we let you tell us about that dream. And that's where we start with our events. So you've been around me for a little bit, and I've shared with you several dreams, and I've shared with you visions of other people that I'm associated with, one of them being the Bold Book Tour and Mm -hmm. another event being held in Austin uh, later on in the year about uh, a group called uh, uh, the Baller Group, I I guess. I can't remember the exact title, but Be a Baller Group. But – and I've seen you perform. You recently Mm -hmm. had the event, uh, the G7 event, which was an international event, and right. people from all over the world were there. And it goes back to what you just said, that you don't have to worry about the food. I actually, you invited my family and I, and we, we got to experience it. And my daughter actually was alert, allergic to what was being served. Mm-hmm. And uh, I immediately got up and I'd mentioned it to you, and you're like, oh, I'll take care of that. I'll, I'll have them bring her a vegetarian meal. Right. And, I mean... Just that, and I can't imagine being a speaker at an event where <laughs> I have to do that. I mean, I just, it just doesn't work for me. So give us another example of working with you, working with an event planner uh, takes away from the speakers and the authors, you know, how much relief that is. I mean, take it from the top. I know we got to mm-hmm. have the end in mind, but um, let's use the Bold Book Tour for example. I mean, we got a all day event. Uh, starts at eight, goes to five, two hundred people. We got a lot of things going on. We've got um, live simulcasts going on around the world, and uh, so just use that as an example. Okay, so some of the things I would suggest on for example, your book tour, if we're going to use that event specifically, let's talk a little bit about the details on that one. So if you were to hire me as, as an event planner, the, one of the things that I can suppose you need is you need a positive return on investment. So you need to know that the event planner fee, number one, is well paid for and it's well deserved. And the value that we bring to you far outweighs the expense of the invoice that we send to you. Because let's face it, with your bold book tour, you have probably 10 to 15 vendors that you have to hire at any one given moment. This is for any event. You're going to have to procure services and sourcing and interviewing for 10 to 15 vendors. You're going to have to deal with the hotel or the venue. You're going to have to deal with that contract. You're going to have to deal with the food and beverage expense. You're going to have to deal with the audio and the visual. You're going to have to deal with the live streaming. You're going to have to deal with staging. You're going to deal with lighting. You're going to deal with um, PR, press releases, marketing, advertising, social media. How do we get the word out? How do we invite guests to it? What does that look like? What are the incentives? And then on the other end of it, you have to secure sponsors because you've got to get your event paid for. You've got to secure sponsors. You've got to secure fundraising. Who's going to do all of that for you? Who's going to oversee the photography? Who's going to oversee the videography? In an event like the Bold Book Tour, in order to increase your revenue, I would highly recommend doing breakout sessions. So um, if you have vendors in that we can invite to come in that can bring value to your audience members, let's charge them to pay to play. That helps you defer some of your costs of your event, and it also gives those vendors increased visibility, especially if you have very high keynote speakers. I understand you have Les Brown coming in as your, as your main keynote speaker. Well, you guys are spending a pretty penny to get him involved, I would guess, to come in for this. 
and yeah. you want to get your other speakers, all of you, Tracy, and all the other 12 authors that are in there, everybody needs a little piece of it. Everybody needs to get paid on what we do. Mm-hmm. How are you going to pay for all of this? Well, you got to get smart. you got to sm- get smart on how you're going to work the room. What does that look like? What are the revenue-producing ideas that we can come up with where we may – let me just throw this vision out at you. What if we created breakout sessions? And it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to order another suite from the venue, which could potentially cost us money, but we could put up pipe and drape, which is significantly less expensive, and we could do breakout sessions in different areas of the room. So let's say that um, from one to two, we're going to have breakout sessions, and we have six different curtains set up in different locations so the sound doesn't travel over. And let's say that people want to come in and they want to talk with James Shoals, let's say. They really liked oh. his presentation. They think he's skulls, and they think he's dynamic. Let's do a breakout session and put those people inside that breakout session, and that gives James another opportunity to sell something off of that event that creates revenue for him at the end of that event. I mean, we even have, we even have people on our event team that will come in and you, get, you as the speaker give us access to your calendar for that event. We will sit there and we will book those people on your calendar for the next two weeks. That way when those people are still hot on you, we can get them on your calendar for a 30-minute strategy call so you can upsell them into something else that you offer something else that you do that begins that ongoing relationship long after that event is over. Because let's face it, repeat customers are the easiest customers to have. Mm -hmm. They know you. They love you. They like what you do. They already follow you. So if we can get those people on your calendar, we get them into a higher package for you later on after this event, that's just the beginning of your relationship with that client, and it all started because of the event. Mm We have people, we have services also where, um, and I, I don't put this out to everybody. I want everybody to know all our secrets, but I'm just going to tell you this because of the Bold Book Tour is that what I would recommend for you also to increase revenue is we have what I call planters, and these are beautiful people. I'm telling you, people maybe from Jamaica, people that come in from uh, Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, I've got Hawaiian Polynesian women that are gorgeous, mm-hmm. and we, we call them planters. And what they do is they are paid people, professionals. Most of them are actors, musicians, that type thing in the arts, creative arts side that love to come in. We hire them, and that we plant them strategically in the room. They're what I call energy givers. Mm-hmm. And that means that they sit there and they nod and they're like, oh, yeah, I like that. You know, oh, my gosh, what do you think about this guy? Do you know anything about him? And they, they are given specific instructions by us, your event team, on what they are to do, how they are to do it. And, Tracy, you may not know this because you're not a woman, but, and I laugh about this, but hear me out. Women love to talk to other women in the women's restroom. Mm. So if I take a planter and we go on a break, we take a 15-minute coffee break, let's say, I will have one of your planters, one of my planters, go into the restroom because she's got to go to the restroom too, just like everybody else. Nobody knows that she's a planter. And two women are standing there, and she hands the other woman, the planter hands uh, an attendee a paper towel. And the woman says, thank you. And the planner goes, girl, I love those shoes. And she goes, oh, these old things. I got these at Marshall's. You know, oh, my gosh, they're so comfortable. But no, not really, because that's how women are. We don't receive compliments like that. And the truth is that starts a conversation in the restroom over a paper towel because you handed her one. Mm-hmm. And now you follow each other back to the coffee urn. You get your cup of coffee because it's, It's, um, you know, the temperature varies in the hotel room, and you start that relationship going, and little does that attendee know that you are a paid person, that planter is a paid person in the room, and it creates a positive energy because that planter is talking all about the positive things about what's going on in that room. 
Mm-hmm. And they look good, too. And I don't mean that in a crass, harsh way, but people that look good and their image looks good, it looks clean, it looks attractive, there's something about an energy in the room when you start getting beautiful people in a room that also e- emit a positive energy. So there's a lot of different ways that we can help help you make a positive return on your investments. Um, we just strategically partnered with somebody who's been successful at sponsorships and fundraising. And to be honest with you, <laughs> we went into that interview thinking we were interviewing her. And the truth is she was interviewing us because she had the statistics, she had the process, she knew what she was doing. She knew how to do it. She knew the pitfalls. Um, and when we walked away from there, our eyebrows were raised and said, wow, amazing. This was a blessing to us hmm. that, w- that confirmed that we were on the right track as an event planner because the number one thing I get asked as an event planner, in the three years I've owned my own business, I've been doing um, corporate events for 30-plus years, the number one thing I get asked is, do you do sponsorships and fundraising? And up until now, I've said no. And the reason is because I would take zero money up front, I'd work my ass off, and pray to God that there was enough money left over to pay me and my team after the sponsorships and after the event expenses. And I said, I'm not doing that again. I couldn't float somebody for 10 months on a salaried position for no money down. And so when we prayed about and we thought about and, we, and, and it, it just happened. I mean, people just came to us and it, it's all lining up strategically to benefit our clients, the resources that we have access to. And so with our strategic partnerships with, you know, I mentioned earlier, Tracy, to you that it takes anywhere from 10 to 15 vendors mm-hmm. Well, feasibly speaking, if you were to go work in contracts and procurement in corporate America, they're going to make you get at least three bids. So let's say your pipe breaks in your house. Mm -hmm. You're going to call three different plumbers to get three bids, and you're going to decide, A, what is the right price to get my pipe fixed? And B, what is the relationship and the trustworthiness of having the plumber in my house working on my home? to fix this pipe. Mm -hmm. And so the truth is, when you're dealing with this broken pipe and you are only interviewing a plumber, three bids may not seem like a lot. But when you're dealing with 15 different vendors that you've got to interview, and there's three of them minimum, so that you know you're on the right track financially, and service-wise, the service they're going to offer you, that's 45 vendors you have to review and interview. How much time do you have? Hmm. Exactly. I mean, who wants to take that on when really all you want to do is deliver your message to your audience? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we've already done all that work for you. We have strategic partnerships and in various price ranges and various services. So if you want a videographer to come in and do your event, we can get you anywhere from $1,000 up to $8,000 for a videographer. And it depends on the service that you're looking for. It depends on what you're looking for, what the scope of work is, that type of thing. But once we understand your vision, when we talk about what the end result is and we work backwards, we're going to make recommendations to you based on our experience and our industry. And here's the cool thing. You, with the Vince's Significance, you get one project manager. So instead of you having to be in control of your 15 vendors that you've already signed contracts with, we're your project manager. We oversee all the contracts. We oversee all the timelines. We oversee the budget. That's within our full scope of work. We will review all of your contracts for you. If there's any contract negotiation that needs to be done, we have the expertise to do that for you. You don't have to worry about whether or not this plumber is overcharging you, to go back to the pipe scenario. 
We already know that that's a fair price. There's no sense in us calling around. We also know that that seems a little bit high to us based on our experience. I think we can get it lower and I know who to call. And let me give you a perfect example. So yes, we worked this um, international conference, the Houston Global Trade Conference and G7 Awards Gala. We had nine international dignitaries coming in from different countries that we had to manage their schedules, their timelines, their hotels, their agendas, everything that we had going on for the two days, which was wonderful. And we were at the Hilton Americas. So my client that had hired us, I went to every meeting that we had with the Hilton Americas catering and the audiovisual people. We met with them face to face. And the lady, the catering manager said, I was looking at the contract that she had drawn up and coffee was $83 a gallon. And she said, you're going to need six gallons, plus you have to offer one gallon of, one urn of decaf, which is standard. And I said, why is it $83 a gallon? Mm -hmm. What are you serving for $83 a gallon? And she said, oh, well, we're serving Starbucks. And I said, well, do you have a house coffee? Because... We're, we had 358 attendees coming. I don't need Starbucks coffee. I just need coffee. And she goes, oh, you just want the house coffee? And I said, yes. I said, what is the price difference in that? She goes, well, the price difference is $28 a gallon. I said, $28 less a gallon to have house coffee? She said, yes. I looked at my client and I go, well, that's a no-brainer. So when you're talking six gallons of coffee at $28, it may not sound like a lot, but if you save $120 for one day just on coffee, it doesn't take long to know that your event planner fee is worth the money. Yes. Our clients, by the time they're done with us and we have done the contract negotiations, the things that we hear from our clients is, I could not have done this without you. Your expertise was invaluable. And your planner fee was paid over three times the savings that you gave us. Your planner fee was paid over three times just by contract negotiation. Let me give you another example mm -hmm. of one thing we did. So we had a client and... She had an event going on. It was a speaker event. And this particular instance, she had gotten caught at one event, not with us, but with another event that she had done. She forgot to cancel her hotel rooms. So I don't know if you know anything about hotels, the way they operate today when you're dealing with masses of people. So hotels, they work off two things. They work off of space and square footage, and they normally give you a food and beverage minimum, and you have to have a minimum guaranteed overnight rooms. Mm -hmm. Really, they don't even like to give you event space unless you're booking a minimum of overnight rooms. So you have to be able to know how, know how to negotiate the overnight rooms and the food and beverage minimums to make that work for you, especially like in Houston, I know people, they commute. You know, they just don't stay in a hotel. It's not like New York where they'll stay in a hotel. A lot of times we'll all commute home here in Houston. Mm -hmm. She forgot to oversee the timeline on the contract and forgot to cancel her overnight rooms at the time that the hotel had said she had to cancel them. Mm. $4,000 mistake. Mm. And guess what? It was on her credit card because, in, because hotels require you, I don't care who you are, to put a certain percentage down, usually on a credit card, and they pray to God you forget to cancel that room, those overnight mm. rooms that you didn't need. Yeah. That is one, just one vendor, and you have 15 to deal with. When you hire events of significance, you don't ever worry about missing a deadline like that. We're on you in the beginning, 
We're on you one month prior. We're letting you know, okay, in three weeks, we need to cancel those hotel rooms. What are we looking at? Do we have any stragglers? Let me call the stragglers. Let's start managing this. And we will make sure that one week in advance of that deadline that we call you and say, hey, listen, I want to let you know, I know we've been in touch the past three weeks, but we're on to the deadline. Is there anybody else we're missing that you know needs an overnight room? Because on the 28th, we have to cancel these. And we do that for all of your vendors. That's invaluable. You talked earlier in the beginning about monetizing the event and, of course, ticket sales and sponsorships. And What are some other ideas that you've implemented to monetize the event for authors mm-hmm. and speakers to focus? Right. Well, I think um, the pay-to-play concept is really important in our business. And what I mean by that is if you can get people, professionals, businesses, companies, people that you know that own businesses that can come in and have booths at your event, exhibit booths, expo tables, whatever you want to call them, if you can get those people to come in to your event, let's say I've seen it where $500 may be a booth. Okay, you can come in, you can be there all day long. I'd love to have you. It's $500 to have a booth in the room. The audience in the room is that person's target market. So there's value in there for them. The second thing is you can go higher on that and you can say, well, it's $500 to have a booth in the room and you get to be with our crowd. And if you'd like all your stuff on our printed materials, it's $750 for your booth. And you can go even higher with that, and you can say, and if you'd like to have five minutes on stage to talk about your business, not only will you get the booth, you'll also get your logo on the printed materials. You get five minutes on stage, it's $1,000. Nice. Okay, and then for another five more minutes, it's 12.50. And then for 15 minutes on my stage, $1,500. Then here's the other thing. If you get buy-in from your speakers, and those speakers absolutely love that booth vendor, and, and most of the time they do. Most of the time the people you're inviting to your room also have a similar target market as the people that are in your room, which is great. It's a great collaboration for everybody. There's a lot of positive energy that results around that. You can even pay those speakers. So let's say Tracy and James are, are doing their spe- spe- speaker you know, reel on stage, and they're doing their gig, and they say, and hey, we want to give a shout-out to Little Boutique in the back of the room for sponsoring an event booth back there. Take a look at her. Alicia, Alicia, raise your hand. Alicia raises her hand. For that shout-out is another $350. Nice. I like that. So it makes everybody feel good. Alicia gets her rock star moment in the back of the room. Um, If there's another little plug that you can say, hey, Alicia, you've got a special thing going on. You want to shout it out from the back of the room. You know, that's another $350 on top of your $1,500. So there's a lot of ways that we can help you make money, not just your ticket sales. I mean, ticket sales should really just be the gravy. It's your sponsors and your people in the room and your buy-in that should, should really be the huge people that take the brunt of that, of that expense of that event. And if you have a great event planner and you have somebody that works with you with your needs and can bring this value to you and then also help you negotiate your contract so you're getting the best deal, but we can save you thousands of, thousands of dollars and hours and hours of time that you don't need. And did you just say that your book tour is in August? Yes. <laughs> okay. I thought you said that, and I was like, oh, it's not August, is it? Okay, so where do you guys stand on that? And, well, I mean, is that something you want us to help you with and be involved with, or well, you know, are you free like to said, talk I about ha- this with me? Or? I have a team, and mm-hmm. 
of course, we'll have to discuss it with the team. But personally, I don't have the bandwidth to do all that, what you just described. And, okay. Uh, you know, it would be, a, I would think, a great opportunity to have someone like yourself on the Bold Book Tour to make it successful. Um, mm-hmm. What what are you what are you recommending? Well, uh, I, I don't know where you are. Like the first thing I would do if if you were hired to hire events of significance, first thing I would do is I would do an assessment on where you are, because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. If you've already done most of it, then we can do hourly consultations for you and your team based on where you need to go in the next few weeks. You don't have a lot of time, to be honest. Yeah. With well, you. let me let me back up a little bit to help you answer okay. that question. We do have a venue. We have a venue reserved. We have okay, sponsorships. We have uh, some significant sponsorships. We have um, Infusionsoft. We have that's a monetary one. We have Strikingly. That's not monetary. Uh, I've got Starbucks is not monetary, but she's going to provide the coffee. Nice. Uh, <laughs> we just talked about uh, coffee. Yes, and. Uh, Right now, we've got, I think there's a few others, but as far as the venue, the food is secure. Nice, so okay, we're looking that's great. For, well, we're, I say secure. It's picked. It's, it's, the date's been set, but we've got to find sponsorships to satisfy that cost. Mm, okay. Uh, strikingly, or not strikingly, but Infusionsoft's going to be providing a monetary sum 30 days in advance of the event. I, I'm pretty sure and some others for the they're a, they're a, they're sponsoring the entire event all cities and and events so that's nice good. so you know mm-hmm. we're looking for obviously we have to get more sponsorships we're looking for way, other ways to monetize the event mm-hmm. and um, we've got to get the major speakers paid or at least compensated for their time and, so and travel where we're at, so and travel mm-hmm. exactly Okay. Well, is that something that you want me and my team to look into for you? I mean, are well, you interested? Is that what you're asking me? Or Well, like I said, I've got a team, and the team has to decide on, on the direction they have to go. But you have okay. my vote. But uh, uh, we have to get buy-in from the others to make sure this sure. is the way that we want to go, and we want to make sure we can get you paid, obviously. So mm-hmm. um, I think – we can start the conversation and mm-hmm. uh, take it from there if you're willing to do that because we, we yeah. have my, – my, I advocate for these people. I mean, I, this is not a one-time event. And like I said, there's other events planned with other, author, with other speakers uh, from a different mm-hmm. group. Um, and, of course, you know, you're helping me do local events as well. So this is a big-picture thing, and it's not a one-off. So – the relationship's just starting, and I think there's, okay. a key, there's a definitely an opportunity there. But uh, like I said, I do have a team, and um, they have to have buy-in and that. So, what would you th- what would you say would be the next step, logical step? Mm-hmm. Well, I would say the next step is maybe getting together, um, either a call or a, a webinar, and seeing. Um, if they feel, I mean, if your team feels like they need a professional planner, you can share with them this web, this teleseminar that we just talked about that we did. And if your team feels like that they want to move forward with us, we'd be happy to sit down and talk with your team, your advisory board, your committee, and figure out where you are, how much more help you're going to need based on a, a full needs assessment. And we can either put together a full consultation for you where, you know, it's a package deal not to exceed type thing, or, and in your case, it'd probably be better just to do something like an hourly basis type thing, because you guys have done a lot of work. You really have. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm proud of you for doing that. So you, don't, you may not need all of that. You know, as far as the pre-planning, you've done pretty well. You just need the loose ends to all come together. So let me ask you one more thing. Who's going to oversee the event the setup, the execution, and the teardown. A specific person? Mm-hmm. Primarily, it would be the Houston-based speakers. So there's three of us. There will probably be okay. a lead in that. Um, 
Okay. Um, so if your people want to do that and they want to be responsible for everything that it takes to pull all that together, you know, you can do that if you feel like you're equipped for that. If you yeah, feel but we like don't, we don't want would, we don't want to do that. That's why I'm talking right? to you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying is that you know there's a lot of things that are going to happen in the in that timing and especially the timeline, the agenda, the keeping things on track, the moving people in. Who's going to do the signage? Who's going to do the sign in? How's the registration going to work? Is it going to be electronic? Uh, Who do you have set up at the registrations? What if you have walk-ins? How are you going to be prepared to take payments for walk-ins? What are you going to do if someone walks in and says, I'm a guest of so-and-so and and I'm free? Who's going to manage that for you? Your speakers? I can just see that. I mean, yeah, that happens more often than not. So the value of hiring an event planning team, Mm -hmm. so you don't have to deal with all of that. We have processes into place that we know how to handle all of that. You're going to have booths. Let's, let me give you an idea of what I foresee here. So you have booths in the back of the room. Let's say that we have 35 people that buy in at $1,500, and we have those booths in the back of the room. Everybody needs signage. Who's going to do that for you? Who's going to create that for you? Who's going to do the agenda? Who's going to do the timeline? Who's going to move around the stage props when Les says he wants his table lamp right next to him and – that table lamp doesn't need to be there for James, right? So there's different things that happen. Some people might want a wireless mic. Other person might prefer a stand-up mic. Who's going to order all of that? Who's going to go down into the details to see that your pipe and drape and your uplighting is all perfect? Let me tell you, if I had to say to people, if I had to say, when I tell my clients, they go, what makes the biggest impact in my event for the least amount of money, lighting. Mm. People don't think about it. But you have a pipe and a drape that's 30 foot tall and 80 foot wide, and you put up four up lights on the bottom of that, the expense of that would probably run you about $500. But the wow factor that just took your plain old ugly hotel into the nighttime disco ready to feel warm and excited and fuzzy, hotels are like, hotels take so much work to make them feel warm. Yeah, I don't know Whereas if you're familiar. Whereas when you go with a, hmm? I don't know if you're familiar with the Houston Club, but in that George Bush room, oh yeah, they're on the corner. Mm-hmm. It's all windows. That's an aha moment, right? That is beautiful in itself, and it has a view, which is mm. phenomenal. But most hotels, you get four plain gray walls. Yeah. And so there's a big difference between holding your event in, let's say, a restored firehouse museum where people are going to remember the experience of when they walked in, the aha, oh, my God, isn't this unique? This is absolutely phenomenal. Well, I, as your event planner, have to turn your hotel into the, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. It doesn't even feel like a hotel. I feel like I'm on Sandals Resort whatever your theme is for your event. Oh, my gosh, I feel like I walked into a John Maxwell live streaming conference, (laughs) you know. So it's the little things like that that make a wow factor. And if we can create an experience for your guests, they're going to be talking about your event forever. And a lot of times hotels can't create that experience without a lot of love and care. (laughs) So, but we, we, we bring that. That's what mm-hmm. we want is that experience for sure because this has to carry on into three other cities in the U.K. And this is, this is huge for these speakers. I mean, we're rolling off of this book, the success of the book, and, and taking it to the stage. And this is life-changing stuff, and we've got to do it right. We've got we to do, it, do it right. Well, 
we'd love to help you be a part of the success. I mean, we've just given you the tip-top iceberg of what we can do for you. And if you get into the position where you really want to wrap all of this up and you want to get a contract going, I'd love to talk with you about the scope of work and what we recommend. And uh, if nothing else, I want to be invited to the book tour. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. And, you know, we forgot about volunteers. I mean, I've already had people come up to me and say, I want to be a volunteer. I want to help out. And that's critical as well. I mean, having a team of volunteers to somebody to turn to when, you know, we're getting ready to go on stage. We're focused on what we're doing. I mean, we can't have people tugging at us for problems and issues and this yeah. person said that they were free. This person said that I'm supposed to be at a VIP table, but they haven't paid. Oh, my gosh. I just could imagine. Right. I don't want to be a part of that. I just can't because that's going to aggravate me, and I'm not good when I'm aggravated. <laughs> well, and you're not on your game. I'm you not on my game. and your focus. I know that speakers are game people. You know, that they are very – when they are on their game and they're up there – they are in the zone. And for the microphone to go off or the battery to go dead, it totally rattles them. Even pastors are that way, right? They get in their game, they get up there on stage, and then the battery keeps cracking or the light bulb keeps flashing in their eye, and it's such a nuisance. And so when you hire an event planner, we've already anticipated all of that what if to the best of our ability and been proactive to make sure that everything has been taken care of so none of that happens. And when it does happen, the guy is no more than three foot away with a different battery. So you can come right back onto your game again. I've seen it. I've seen Howard Partridge come around, and he loses his focus. Boy, if it's one battery, and he gets mad, because for him to rev back up again and get back to where he was takes a few minutes. We don't want that I've, to happen. I've seen Now, that you first. mentioned volunteers. Okay, here's my feeling on volunteers. Volunteers are great, but they're volunteers. Mm-hmm. Okay? My experience with volunteers has not been very positive, especially with mm-hmm. my very large events, because I can't depend on them. My global conference, my client said, oh, I'm not hiring your hospitality staff. I'm not going to hire them. I don't have a budget for that. I'm providing the volunteers. I said, okay, great. He sends me 17 to 20 of them. I call a meeting in advance because I believe in face-to-face meetings to, for accountability. So I call a meeting in advance. I, I get it all together. I schedule the time. Everybody says, oh, or you know, most of them say, oh, yeah, I can be there. I can be there. And uh, four people showed up. Well, that wasn't worth my time to drive all the way across Houston to do a face-to-face meeting with four people. Do you know how many people showed up? How many of the volunteers showed up for my international two-day conference? Zero. I know the answer because I know what happened at the event. It was zero, yeah. Okay. Let me give you another real-world example. My team, my two of my girls, my project managers, are on the rodeo committee. They do two different committees. One of them is live transportation, and one of them is silent silent and live auction. They have to rally 2,200 volunteers between those two committees, between February and March. They account 25% of volunteers will show, and of those, when they're calling on the car to come get Mrs. Bush, and they go, where's my car for Mrs. Bush, the volunteer can't be found. Hmm. He's either off smoking a cigarette or he's in the bathroom or whatever. So on our very large events that mean a lot, we highly recommend that you hire our hospitality staff. They're not high-paid managers, right? It's not going to cost you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But they're dependable. They're reliable. They're greeters. They're seeders. They're fun people. They have a hospitality background already because they're in the catering and industry. And they are accountable to us. And based on your needs, we'll figure out how many volunteers we're going to need, and we'll bring those people with us. 
And then we know that we will have an exact spot for what those people are and what their responsibilities are in advance. And they show up because they're paid. So volunteers, give or take. They sound wonderful, but I haven't had good experience with that. Well, you've really helped us out in understanding exactly how you can help an event. And I'm excited about the future with events of significance. And tell everybody how they can find out more information about you or your company. Mm -hmm. So my name is Robin Doms, and that's spelled D-A-H, M as in Mary, S as in Sam. And you can find us on our website at eventsofsignificance.com. That's eventsofsignificance.com. There's a contact us form on the right-hand side. Contact us. It will take you straight to our calendar, and you can set up a 15 or 30-minute call with us and then we will get in touch with you and figure out what your needs are and how we can help you with your event. Outstanding. I appreciate your time, Robin. Well, thank you, Tracy. I know it's going to be great. You guys have done a lot of work already. I'm really proud of you. Sometimes when I ask those questions, I'm nervous. (laughs) (laughs) But you have done a lot of work, and, you know, if you just need us to pull it all together for you so that it's flawless, we're happy to do that too. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your time, and we'll be in touch. Thank Thanks, you. Tracy. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.